Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I got a question from one of my subscribers in my The Phantom Speaker Test video workshop, which, by the way, you can sign up to for free at the link in the description. This is my listening test workshop, if you will, to help you figure out where exactly in your room to place your desk and spe speakers so that you can really get the most out of your setup even before you get started with treatment. It's really critical when you're dealing with a home studio. But so basically, Garden said, Hi, Esco. Thanks for the lesson. I'm experiencing a minus 11 dB dip at 90 Hz on the right speaker and a minus 3 dB dip at 90 Hz on the left speaker. Neumann KH310's room is 340 by 470 by 270. I am facing the short wall. My left wall is very thick concrete panel and my right wall is a much thinner concrete panel with a door just next to the right speaker. Is it safe to assume this massive asymmetry in the low end at 90 Hz is due to different wall materials, thickness and the door? Thanks, cheers. First of all, Garden, excellent question. And this allows me to dive into a, an aspect of treating home studios that I don't talk about that much. So that's why I wanted to answer this question here. And that answer is probably yes, but it is important to understand that the asymmetry isn't the cause of the dip. It's only potentially the cause for the difference in the dips, right? So this is, for example, because like in this case, one wall might be less dense it doesn't reflect as much low frequency energy. And so that reduced amount of reflected energy can also only induce a much shallower or a much uh, less strong interference in one speaker, right? But if that's only one potential cause. It could also be caused by something entirely different. So there might be, for example, a reflection happening on one side that doesn't happen on the other side that counteracts the actual dip that we're seeing. And that can happen because acoustic effects in a small room in particular, they all sit right on top of each other, kind of like the layers of an onion. Yeah, And we're only really seeing the top layer. If we're looking at the frequency response, that's what that is. It's kind of the top layer. But it's very difficult to understand, to read, to see, to distinguish in the frequency response what the layers underneath are actually doing. And to know for sure, you really have to kind of peel away those layers one by one until you land on the one that's actually causing the problem. So it's kind of an iterative process of analyzing, understanding, treating, and then repeating that whole process over and over again. Oftentimes you'll actually find that it's not just one acoustic effect causing a problem, but it might be two or three on top of each other. And that can be super confusing, even if you know what you're doing. Yeah? Small room acoustics are super messy. And that really brings me to the point that I want to make with this answer. And that is that if you're treating a home studio, it makes sense to approach the treatment in a different way. I call it shotgun style treatment. What you're basically trying to do is to treat all the fundamental issues right off the bat. And then, only then do you really see if anything slipped through that you may want to adjust your treatment for. It's just much easier to get a solid functional result that way instead of trying to peel away all those layers one by one before you even start with your treatment. It's so easy to get lost in that process and end up doing nothing at all, yeah? analysis paralysis. So with this answer, I want you to take away two things here. The first one is that you know that dealing, you know that, you know that you're dealing with a multi-layered problem when you're analyzing the acoustics in your home studio. And it's hard to figure this out, even for the best of us. Which kind of brings me to my second point, and that is, if you are confused about this, that's okay. Cut yourself some slack and just keep going. These things will eventually fall into place the more you learn, the more experience you gather, the more time you spend in your room. And of course, 
If you want more help, keep watching my channel and also check out my online courses, Build a Better Base Trap and Absorb Replacement Hacks for Odd Rooms, which you can also find linked below. All right, but with that, let's keep learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.